Okay, so here's one slide summary. Basically, the key thing, let me figure out the right one. Okay, is that uh, I was Dave Bly's postdoc back when he was at Princeton, and now he came to Columbia, and I think there's quite a bit of overlap, but he's in CS and I'm in E, so I feel okay about that. Um, but yeah, I'm like a, a smaller version of Dave Bly. So here's, <laughs> here's the, uh, the, the you know, general pipeline, not just you know, for a lot of people, that you have data, and you want to build a model, so you you just you know de you define your model. You then take the data and you feed both of those into some inference algorithm to learn the model parameters, and then you use that for prediction or exploration or whatever you're interested in. So uh, some keywords here. I'm focused uh, mostly on Bayesian models, Bayesian modeling, and here I am also interested in developing uh, variational inference, which is like a optimization meets Bayesian inference, and we heard a little bit about that in the last talk. And so here, um, I'll focus on topic modeling. Uh, so basically, you, you, you know, feed in millions of documents, and what you get out is a set of distributions on words where, for example, I show three distributions where I have represented those distributions by showing the most, 10 most probable words. So one distribution says these are the 10 most probable words, and you can interpret that as saying, this is a this is a topic that's you know within this data set something about entertainment. Uh, so that's the area of topic modeling. Um, LDA is the most famous one, and that basically says you have these topics and they're kind of equally you know there's no structure between them necessarily. So one of the modeling things that I'm interested in is putting more structure into the the models themselves. So for example. Uh, we might know that the, the themes or the topics have this hierarchical representation, so this is you know standard stuff, but this is what i 've worked on where you know you might say the art you know the general art words should be at the top of a tree and then it should get more specific about art and then at the bottom, maybe the music related words will split into jazz or classical, something like this. Um, so the problem there is to define an appropriate prior and an inference algorithm for it and then to feed in your two million uh, documents from the New York Times and see what, what it gives you. And so this is mostly a pictures-based um, presentation. So here's you know, two uh, sub-branches from the tree. So you, know, you have a root node, and then you can go in many directions. Here's two of those directions, and this is the type of structure that we learned from the New York Times, which uh, makes you know, sense. You have general words about games here, then it goes to football, base, uh, baseball or basketball, et cetera, and it gets more specific. So we learn this additional structure, uh, you know, finer structure from the data, and the fact that we have so much data gives us confidence that we should be able to learn this, you know, these tails down here, basically, all this fine structure that's within the data. Um, but you know, maybe a tree is not the appropriate you know, model, maybe it's not the best, maybe you might think that these topics are arranged in a graph, and so they're fully connected, but there's sparse connections between them, so instead of moving you know, down a tree, you can kind of move any, between any topic, but with sparse you know, connections between them. And so here, um, you can also see, this is a, another model that I've worked on, um, where you again, so I, you know, it's hard to read, I guess, but you have similar ideas where each topic represents a theme and then the connections between them make sense. Okay, so uh, the reason why we can learn these very structured models is because we have so much data that we can kind of get everything out of the data, but with more data means that we have to, you know, have a more efficient algorithm. So on the model inference side, I've worked on um, scalable algorithms for, you know, learning these models. Um, so this is kind of the general idea. You know, you have tons of documents. You want to learn something about each document to update the global topics. Well, instead, just subsample randomly, learn just about that, and then update, you know, with a stochastic step. So the, the idea is very simple, but very generalizable to many different types of models. And here's a, a nice plot that really proves that more data is better. Um, so for example, we had two million documents uh, or something like this, and uh, or this might have been a different, different data set, but we had you know, lots and lots of documents, and we subsampled uh, you know, 25,000 of them, learned the model, and then as a function of time on log scale showed how we did, and you get this performance. So the model is doing better and better on a test set. Um, you know, at faster, but you know, at this speed, I should say, but it kind of then peters out here because you've 
only looking at 25,000. So then say, okay, well, I'll look at 50,000 instead. I'll double the amount of data. And then it runs slower, of course, but it also gets better performance. So then you say, well, I'll double that and look at 100,000, and it's even slower, but the performance is even better. Whereas if you look at the full data set and use this stochastic inference, you get performance that looks like this, where it's much faster and much better. So that's kind of the, you know, why these things are so nice. Um, another thing that you heard uh, Bob talk about uh, black box variational inference, I, I was one of like the people who worked on that. Um, so the idea is here, maybe you don't have an objective function that you can actually calculate in closed form, but, um, but you don't care because really what you're interested in is just knowing what the gradient is of that objective function. And so instead of, say, finding the gradient at this, so this is, um, you know, just a very conceptual picture. Instead of finding the gradient, the true gradient, uh, which you can't do in closed form, maybe you can get a stochastic approximation of this gradient where the expectation is equal to the truth, so it's unbiased, but then there's some variance. So this is what this equation is basically showing, that you can't get this expectation, but you want the gradient, and really you can write the gradient of this expectation in this way and then do Monte Carlo sampling. But that variance might be huge, and so we looked into introducing these things called control variants to, you know, so this is all more technical, but basically variance reduction um, uh, so you can do this more efficiently. So this is uh, something I'm interested in. And then finally, uh, in my last two slides, I have um, uh, two pictures. So I don't just do discrete data or documents. I'm also interested in image processing uh, problems. So here's an, a problem of compressed sensing where uh, you measure the Fourier coefficients of an MRI, but you don't measure all of them. You only measure 35% of them. And if you do the naive thing and just fill in the zeros for the missing data and invert, you get something that's not diagnostic quality. But if you feed this into some algorithm that puts constraints on what type of image you want to, to find to learn, with that same data plus the algorithm, you can get something like this back. And so I'm interested in, you know, I. I, I'm, I have not an expert on the MRI, but I'm, I've basically applied, you know, the machine learning techniques that I'm interested in, the models that I'm interested in uh, to develop this algorithm, these algorithms. Um, and also another image processing problem, maybe you have a black and white image and a very a high resolution black and white image and a very low resolution color image that, you know, saves the amount of storage that you need to use. Um, and we want to fuse the color, you know, from this into the, and the resolution of this. And so I've been working on developing, you know, the objective functions to go ahead and do that so that you can get this sort of an output. Uh, and so those are some image processing problems that I've, I've looked into. But basically, I'm very much like in coming up with the objective functions for, for these sorts of problems. Uh, so that's it. Thank you.